See this thing right here, like these hypodermic needles? Take a look at my boot. Shit. Oh my. I can even drop the GoPro. It almost looked like the M caves would cover it up. He said, that's where I found my skulls. You know, I did it once before and I think I could do it again, so we'll be careful. Okay, on three. One, two, three. During the week when I'm doing my regular job, it can get a little monotonous. Emails, spreadsheets, meetings, conference calls, things like that. So I come out here to the park every once in a while and uh, it's kind of a nice place to come where there's no people around usually. And uh, there's very few places in Las Vegas that's like that. So it's kind of nice to come out here, uh, focus on your work, but I just, I can't focus today. I can't stop thinking about the Kenny Beach case. Uh, we've been investigating uh, Kenny's disappearance for over a year now, and I've been out to there multiple times. I haven't really found any solid evidence yet uh, from what happened to Kenny Beach. So I've been re-watching his videos, and something he said just really sticks out in my mind. Uh, there's got to be something in his video, some clue of some um, place off the beaten path where Kenny may have gone um, that we haven't searched yet. Just uh, It just keeps going through my mind. That's where I find my skulls. That's it. Here's a little canyon, or a crevice more like it. <laughs> it goes on up in there. It's kind of cool. I like going up in stuff like that because that's where I find my skulls, you know, off the beaten path. I know that canyon. I know exactly where that canyon is. That is right next to the covered up M cave where those three small caves are. And I know exactly how to get there. It's at the end of Picture Canyon. Oh my God, Kenny said that's where he finds his skulls. Does that, could he have meant that's where we find his skull? Is that off the beaten path where he went? That's one of the few places out there that I haven't, I haven't checked yet. Oh my God, we got to pack. I got to get home and pack. Grab your boots, pack your backpack. We're going hiking because death hike. Skull Canyon starts right now. Saturday, February 11th, 2023 at the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. It's chilly, it's cold, and I probably should have had a jacket, but I know once we go out there, we're gonna warm up quite a bit and probably end up sweating, so it's just as well. I've got some undershirts that should uh, help with this cold a little bit. Now, you know why we're here. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Kenny Veach, a man who walked into those mountains about eight years ago and never walked out, he disappeared. We've been investigating his disappearance for about a year now. I've led several hikes out there, I've filmed them all, you've been following the channel hopefully, and we haven't found anything really substantial, so I've been re-watching his videos and something he said just stuck out in my mind. Here's a little canyon, or a crevice more like it. <laughs> it goes on up in there, it's kind of cool, I like going up in stuff like that because that's where I find my skulls. In one of his videos, he pointed out a canyon and said that's where he finds his skulls. Did he mean that's where we'll find his skull? We're gonna go out there and find out. It's a canyon, I know exactly where it is. It's towards the end of Picture Canyon, which means we've gotta navigate through the desert, through Picture Canyon, past the beast, uh, through the deep, uh, the deep sub canyon, to the end, to that little kind of skull canyon where he pointed out in his video. We're gonna hike up in that rug, extremely rugged canyon and see what's in there. We may find nothing, we may find a cave, we may find Kenny himself, I don't know, but we're gonna find out. So if you're ready, let's load up the truck and drive out there.
9 15 a.m it's about an hour later than i wanted to get out here so it's been a rough week and um i slept a little later than i than i expected to but that's fine we're here it's not too late and uh the weather's not horribly bad it's uh i don't feel any wind right here but it's probably low 50s high 40s maybe great weather for hiking um i've got an undershirt on um but no, no real cold weather gear if you look carefully you can see snow on top of those mountains over there now um I don't really expect to go to those heights up in the snow. Um, so I didn't bring any cold weather gear. So hopefully we won't go up there where our destination takes us. Uh, and we are going to Picture Canyon. That's it out there. First hike at a Picture Canyon this year. I do see a little bit of traces of snow up there right around the beast is. So we're probably going to see some, but I'm going to keep moving. Um, I don't expect it to get super cold, but you never know. Um, and I certainly don't want to spend the night out here. I've got some emergency equipment if something happens and I, I did have to spend the night out here. Um, but hopefully that's not going to happen. So um, with that further ado, let's uh, start walking ahead out there and um, get to this this uh, off the beaten path canyon, Skull Canyon that Kenny Veach said he found his, he finds skulls in. And who knows, he may find some clues in there. So if you're ready, let's go. Now the weather should warm up some as the day goes on, but uh, as we get to some of these higher elevations at Picture Canyon, you never know. So I actually did go back and get an undershirt just in case. It's kind of a thermal exercise shirt I'll put on under my main shirt if it gets really cold, but no cold weather gear today. Um, it was great for uh, the last video, uh, Hidden Cabin, but we were in deep snow out there and it was cold. I don't expect it to be that cold today and hopefully it'll warm up a little bit later on. Keep on going and get to that hidden valley, the end of Picture Canyon, uh, hidden canyon that is Skull Canyon. Walk up in there and see what we can find. For those of you that haven't seen my videos before, this is the long, uh, kind of dull hike just before Picture Canyon. It's about a mile and a half to get there and that's Picture Canyon straight ahead. So we do have to hike about a mile and a half through the open desert to get there. And it's usually kind of a dull uneventful hike, but every now and then you find something interesting out here in the desert. So I'm gonna keep on going, we'll be there shortly. Looks like something was digging here, maybe a, a mouse or chipmunk or something. Something uh, maybe trying to stay warm on these cold desert nights. A lot of wildlife here in the desert, but you don't really see them too much during the day. They're usually underground. Snakes and reptiles. I don't expect you run to those. It's too cold for them. Tarantulas. I don't expect those either. Tarantula season is usually September, October time frame. And uh, that is when the tarantula hawks come out as well. So I don't expect any of those. So we may see some bighorn sheep, um, jackrabbits perhaps, hard to say. Maybe even a coyote too. But uh, other than that, we don't see a whole lot of animals out here. As far as people go, I didn't see any other vehicles out here. I mean, there was some campers way, way out there about 10 miles back. But where we are is fairly remote, so I don't expect to run into any people out here. Which actually is kind of nice. Coming out here as many times as I do, you kind of get a little territorial and uh, it's almost like walking in your own backyard. So anybody out here is kind of like, you almost see them as an invader. I've never seen people out here. You kind of claim the land is your own. It, uh, you become one with it and it's just, would be so unusual to see people out here, but they do come out from time to time, not very often. So the easiest path we're gonna go, I've gone this way before and I've gone this way and this is the way we come back. So we'll go through that uh, kind of draw up there, up that hill. Once we get to the top of the hill, it should be relatively flat all the way into Picture Canyon. And that's where we're gonna go. Just uh, trying to take the easy route, not to overexert ourselves because on these hikes, you never know what you're gonna run into. I don't plan to climb the beast today, but that's not to say we won't do some sort of climbing. 
It just depends what we find out there. You never know what's going to happen on these hikes. It's got to be prepared for anything. All right, so we've come to this kind of, we've come through the draw and we've come to this kind of small hill that we're gonna hike up. It's not a hard hill, but it's uh, it's a hill. And physically, it's not a big deal for me. My exercise regimen is one to two miles a day, depending on how much time I have, I'm wearing a 20 pound weight vest. So my legs, are perfectly fine for this. I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm breathing heavy. It's a higher elevation and I'm just getting started, but Physically, it's not that big a deal. Just gotta watch your step on these loose rocks. See, we're almost up. Not a big deal. Pretty sure this is the way we come back, too. And there you go. Just press on towards Picture Canyon. The more I move, the more comfortable it is. It's not that cold out here. This is a little strange. So here's a dirt mound, which you usually see around a uh, burrow that animal dug, but there's no burrow here. And if you come over here, there's several more dirt mounds, but no burrows. So clearly something is tunneling underground and uh, it's not coming out, it's just, it's just pushing the dirt up and this dirt looks fairly fresh. And there's the entrance or exit. So whatever was tunneling is in there. Probably deep inside there. And I'm sure it doesn't want to be disturbed so we're not going to disturb it. We're going to keep on going, but just goes to show you you may not see it all the time, but the desert is teeming with life. Now way off a distance, you can see Mount Charleston and the mountain range out there. There's still quite a bit of snow up there. Um, it's probably 8,000, 8 to 10,000, even 11,000 feet. So there's still a lot of snow out there, but uh, there was actually more, the snow has melted quite a bit since the weather's warming up a little bit, relatively speaking. And the uh, Mouth to Picture Canyon, I could see little patches of snow up there as well. So good chance we'll run, this, run into some, but uh, I do have my Solomon Desert boots today. They're extremely comfortable for the desert. They fit my shoe, my feet like a glove, and I opted not to bring the Gore-Tex boots. But I don't plan to get in any real snow, deep snow or anything anyway, so. I did sacrifice uh, a little bit of, uh, I guess, usability for comfort. And that's fine because, like I said, I don't plan on going through deep snow. And these boots are not waterproof, they're, they're desert boots. We've only got about, not even three quarters of a mile yet. Here's a really deep draw. A little hill we always pass on the way out the way or the way in and you could see some caves up there these are little pocket caves like a cavity they don't go in very far and uh i don't know said this place is littered with caves but all these caves none of them go in very far they're more pretty much like cavities but we're always hoping you find that one that does go in like you spoke of i'd love to go up and explore some of those but it takes a lot of effort to get to the top of that hill and uh We've got a, a goal today to meet, so we're not going to check out those caves up there, but I just want to show you real quick the terrain and uh, some of these little pocket caves out here that look promising from a distance, but aren't. And I know a lot of you have watched my videos and said, hey, there's a cave here, there's something there, but a lot of time that's the uh, light playing tricks on you. Those what look like caves may not go in more than a foot, but it looks like they do. It's just, uh, you know, a trick of the lighting out here. But there's, there's a couple that have gone in, you know, 20 to 40 feet. So I'm not gonna say caves like that don't exist. They're just few and far between. 
Now there is one we're gonna check out, just in Picture Canyon, just before that deep, almost inaccessible canyon area, sub canyon within Picture Canyon. There's a cave, not really a, a cave, but kind of a massive boulder. It's not under the boulder, but it's kind of like a cave. And it's deep and it's dark, just like Kenny said, but it's not in the shape of an M. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up to it and uh, I'll show you and I'll pull out the Fenix flashlight, which I nicknamed the Night Sun because it's it's a 10,000 lumen flashlight. It's, it's insanely bright. So we'll shine that in there. We'll film the cave. I'll show you what's in it. But uh, I don't think it's the M cave, but it's the only one out here that's deep and dark and ground level. So you be the judge. For those keep it score, we just hit the one mile mark. We're gonna keep on going. We're about a half mile from Baker Canyon. Winds are picking up, so is the wind chill factor, but I expect that not to be an issue once we get in the canyon. The only question is, is there gonna be any snow in there? We'll find out soon enough. Heavy winds coming towards Picture Canyon, almost the top of this hill, almost to the canyon mouth. It's making it really cold and chilly, so I don't wanna stop. Right now I'm somewhat warm. My body heat's keep me warm. But this wind, we're walking into the wind, which makes things even harder. Uphill and into the wind, like some unforeseen force doesn't want us to go to Picture Canyon today. But we're going, we're going. On the clock, we have 36 minutes, 1.45 miles, 525 feet elevation gain. I know this is the same way we usually come because we always walk by this rock that's got these scratchings on it that so looks like petroglyphs. Did a hiker scratch these in? Did Native American scratch these in? Or is it completely natural? You be the judge. Just strange markings like that alien, uh, alien symbol rock that we found up there on the beast. Let's keep going, we're almost there. Just over these small hills is the mouth of Picture Canyon. All right, top of this hill here is Picture Canyon. We'll go down a small hill and we'll be there at the mouth of Picture Canyon. And that's where we start our journey. Almost there. Almost there. Ah, Picture Canyon. My old friend, it's like we're coming home. I love this place. The peacefulness, the solitude. It's unlike anywhere else I've ever been. And I know a lot of you like it too. There's um, over in Australia, one of my viewers, Ellie B, she loves Picture Canyon. And uh, for good reason. It's a beautiful place and there's a lot of points of interest out there. It may very well be the last final resting place at Kenny Beach. At the end of this canyon is a narrow, I know the narrow rugged canyon where Kenny City finds his skulls. That's where we're going today. But there's a few points along the way I'm gonna show you. So without further ado, Let's navigate down this hill and walk into Picture Canyon and see what awaits us on this adventure. Oh, so this is exactly what I wanted to avoid. You see this thing right here, like these hypodermic needles? Take a look at my boot. I don't know if it penetrated the skin, but this is exactly why you want thick boots. So I'm gonna carefully pull these spines out, but I definitely felt they hit my, uh, hit my foot. So I'm gonna carefully pull these out so they don't get stuck in there. I can't get it. Damn it, I'm gonna need the, 
I'm need Leatherman for this, and I feel some something in my boot. I'm gonna take it off. But uh, these things are no joke. So I'm gonna take a break here, take off my pack, grab a Leatherman, and pull these bad boys out. Oh, never a dull moment in Picture Canyon. So like I said, this uh, this cactus bush, I just I, I hit with my foot as I was coming down this hill here, and uh, you could see right here. These are, they're, they're thick, like really thick plastic, and I got a couple of my shoes. So I'm going to try to pull them out carefully. And uh, I couldn't get a good grip there. See, look at that, it's like a needle. I couldn't get a good grip with my finger, so I'm using Leatherman to pull these out. And hopefully I can get them all out. Now what I'm afraid of is one of these breaking off and getting stuck inside of my foot, or my shoe. And if that happens, I'm going to have to take the boot off, and the sock off, and do my best to try to get these out, because... Um, if I got a, a needle stick into my boot, that would probably cause me to have to go back. And I don't want to go back in socks. See, some of these are breaking off. So I'm really praying that they did not penetrate the boot. I'm not going to say I'm screwed if they did, but I'm screwed if they did. All right. Carefully getting all these out of here. I can hear them breaking. Carefully pulling it out. See, that went in just a little bit. So that's why I don't want to break these off. They'll get stuck inside my boot. And if they get stuck too deep and I can't get them out, that's a new pair of boots. Leatherman, don't leave home without it. So I'm gonna do it now, I'm gonna walk around a little bit, see if I feel any more of these inside the boot. If I do, I'm screwed. I'm moving my foot around trying to feel those cactus spines and I don't feel any right now. So far so good. All right, I don't feel anything in the boot. I'm moving my foot around, I walked around. I don't feel any of these in there, but you could take a close look at these. I know there's a GoPro, can't really zoom and get good close-ups, but you could see that these things are no joke. They are, uh, they're like plastic spikes, and they will go inside your boots, your feet. That's why you've got to wear thick, heavy boots out here. So these, uh, these Solomon Desert boots aren't super thick, but they're thick enough leather where um, they do protect you somewhat. But still, these went in quite a bit, probably an eighth of an inch or so inside my foot. And I did feel a prick, but they feel all right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it, and I'm gonna keep going into Picture Canyon. So let me put all my gear back on, and uh, we'll continue our hike. All right. So I said I brought uh, an extra shirt. Uh, it's basically just like a Reebok cold weather shirt, and I'll put this on if it gets too cold. But one thing I like about this Camelback, it's got an expandable uh, kind of flap here where I usually use it to put my helmet if I go caving or need hands-free on the GoPro. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff this in there today so I don't have to carry it. And I know you're wondering, I'm gonna ask, but no, my backpack's packed to the gills. I can't fit it inside there. So I'm gonna tuck it in there and I'll put the backpack on and we'll continue the hike. All right. All right, so I'm seeing some footprints here uh, through the valley. And uh, it's kind of sort of about mine. And there's not a whole lot of people out here. So in all likelihood, this probably my footprint from one of the past hikes. Uh, but people do come out here just not very often. I just took a drink of water. One thing I learned in the military is even if it's cold, even if you're not thirsty, stay hydrated. Very important out here in the dry desert. So I'm not Kenny Beach pushing my body without food or water. I've got food. I've got water. And uh, I'm gonna try to be back before lunch, but if we have to have lunch out here, I do have lunch. And in case you're wondering what's on the menu, it is uh, freeze-dried food as always, we've got beef stew. That uh, ice cold lasagna in the hidden cabin was was a really terrible experience. So hopefully beef stew will be better. Let's keep going. I'm at the picture canyon right there and the beast shortly after it. So let's uh Picture Canyon. This is what I believe it to be the epicenter of the Kenny Beach disappearance and mystery. Kitty Beach no doubt went through this canyon many times, as have we. In fact, we've probably been through this canyon more times than Kenny has. Is it Kenny's final resting place? Is the M Cave out here? 
what other mysteries are in Picture Canyon? Native Americans have been out here for tens of thousands of years, but you won't find really any evidence of them anymore, aside from a few petroglyphs, agave burn pits, maybe a cave or two where they may have lived. It's a desolate place, but it's teeming with life. It is a place of mysteries and legends. And sheer cliff faces. Now up here is a roost where I've seen an owl before. Large bird. And if it was there, I'm pretty sure it would have flown away, but we're gonna slowly walk towards it and see if it's still there, which I doubt, because the thing goes there at night. There's a quietness about this place that, like I said before, is really hard to describe and you can't, you can't really just sense it on the video. You're the only place, you're the only one out here for miles. Oh, there's our first patch of snow. That's all the snow we see will be in good shape because it's not that cold yet. Okay, that roost is right here. And I do not see a bird up there, but you can kind of see the bird crap where something was sitting up there, maybe at night. And there was like a small pocket cave up there. It may go in a little bit, but it's really hard to tell in all likelihood. It doesn't go in more than a few feet. So I'm not gonna over exert myself climbing it because we're out here for a specific reason. And that uh, Skull Canyon, I don't know how rugged it is. I see some more snow up here on the ground. I knew there'd be some out here. And uh, despite the snow, it's really not very cold. I don't have a heavy jacket on. I've got a regular uh, shirt that I usually wear for hiking. There it is. There's a sheep cave. I call it sheep cave because of the footprints of big horned sheep that I saw when I climbed my hill and look inside there. It's not really so much of a cave, it is an outcropping. And behind us is our old friend and nemesis. The beast. Yes, the beast. It doesn't look like that much on video, but I can assure you in person, it's a lot more rugged than it looks. And uh, there's some areas that it's this near vertical. Now your eyes can play tricks on you. A lot of you have seen these, some of these pocket caves up there that look like M caves or whatever else, but I can assure you the closer you get, you can see there's really nothing to them. They don't go in very far. It's not to say there's not one out there that does, but the ones that I've seen don't go in very far. But these cliffs above Picture Canyon are strange places. Um, this is one of the few places in the Desert National Wildlife Refuge where you've got these really steep, steep canyons. And uh, like I said, it's a place of legends. There's uh, some folks that have actually seen a, for lack of better terms, a Batman, a winged demon, some kind of a, a winged person up there on the top of these cliffs, even flying around. Uh, Warlike Wrath mentioned in one of his videos I haven't seen anything like that. I've seen large crows, so maybe they are mistaken. It's hard to say. But uh, that is just one of the legends out here is a winged demon flying around the cliffs of Picture Canyon. Um, some people have mentioned dogmen, and uh, that's something I don't, I'm not sure if I really believe in. Um, kind of like a Sasquatch, but with a dog face. But some people say the, uh, the phantom footsteps could be related to dogmen or other things as well. I haven't seen any evidence of that. So cryptids i mean you never know what's out here i haven't seen hard evidence of it um other than the phantom footsteps that's something i heard but it's hard to say i could have been mistaken so yeah that's the beast that's uh that's picture canyon a little bit of snow on the ground and we may see a little bit more as we get some of the higher elevations but right now um the weather's great the canyon is keeping us shielded from the winds which is helping keeping us warm and at the end of picture canyon is that uh 
Skull Canyon we're gonna explore today, really rugged canyon. So let's keep going. And there's that little kind of cave outcropping deep and dark that I'm gonna show you and to shine the light in because somebody mentioned not too long ago in one of my videos, somebody commented, they saw what appeared to be some writing on there. Um, I think it's natural, but it's hard to say. We'll look at it closer. So just keep going here through Picture Canyon and get to where we're going today. Now you can see what looks like a cave over there. And I think it was the actual picture canyon video I did. We checked it out. There was nothing in there but a black widow. So we backed out quickly, but it doesn't go in more than a foot or two, just an outcropping pretty much. But just goes to show you caves like that. They look like they're significant, but they're not. But sometimes you find a small opening and they lead to big cavities out here. That's not uncommon either. There's the beast from a distance. And there's a little bit of snow on the top of the beast. Make an interesting climb if it was snowing out here, but uh, that's not something we're doing today. Let's keep on going. All right, so this is that outcropping I call Sheep Cave. And I'm not gonna go up there because it's actually a treacherous climb, more so than the beast. If you want to see the climb, it's the second video, second hiking video I've ever done. I believe it's called Death Hike Part 1. And uh, I do climb that hill and go inside there if you want to see what it looks like in there. But I'm not going to climb it today. I've done it before and you could, you know, see one of my old videos if you want to see what it looks like. But it's a nice view from up there. You can see the beast, all the picture canyon. Um, it's worth it to do once, but like I said, it's a little bit treacherous climb. Yeah, so I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to continue forward because there's some other points we're going to see today. We're coming into a narrow spot of Picture Canyon. Take a look at some of these rocks and the lines on these. And uh, think about that alien symbol rock. Look how these lines are, pretty much straight up and down. The straight lines, kind of, sort of. The alien symbol rock had circles on it. Which makes me think that it's not man-made. So evidently, there are some uh, petroglyphs in here that the Native Americans made. I personally haven't seen them. But I wasn't really looking for them, so you may see them. They look kind of like this, even though that's not a petroglyph. But yeah, this is uh, one of the narrow parts of Picture Canyon, and we've seen a lot of animal footprints during the mornings we come out here, so I know at night it's heavily traveled by coyotes and sheep, maybe even mountain lions. But coyotes, sheep, and mountain lions are supposed to be the biggest animals out here. Now take a look at this uh, line right here and this collection of, uh, of silt and, and kind of debris. That shows you the water was flowing through here pretty pretty good and that's how these canyons are made by flowing water millions of years ago know if there's a pocket cave i hadn't seen before that one could go in a little bit it's hard to say but it's very obviously a very rugged climb to get up to it i'll let you check it out but uh, like i said not today today we're focused on skull canyon and that may be a little rugged so i'm gonna stay on target that's where i'm going and that's why we're here this really isn't a cave as much as an outcropping, but uh, if I got stuck out here, it would make a, a good place to spend the night but just because there's some shelter. And uh, you know, you might be able to brush off these rocks and sleep here in the emergency blanket. But uh, that would be dire emergency. And uh, we are about two miles 
in the truck, 725 foot elevation gain and just over an hour of hiking. So unless we were injured, even in the dark, there's no reason why we couldn't make it back to the truck. Now I'll show you, some of you may have been wondering why am I wearing surgical gloves. These, um, these are vinyl gloves, just regular off-the-shelf vinyl gloves. And I, and I like them on these hikes because they're extremely lightweight. I can touch the buttons on the GoPro and my phone very quickly without having to take gloves off. And uh, they keep my hands warm, believe it or not, they do. They keep uh, moisture inside and this dry desert air can really dry your hands out, especially when it gets dirty and dusty. It can get dry and cracked and these, these gloves are fantastic for that. Been in Las Vegas for a few years now and I wear them all, not all the time, but I can tell you what, they do their job. It may seem weird wearing surgical gloves hiking, but as, as standalone glove liners, they work fantastic. And yes, I do have my mechanics gloves with me. So if we do any rock climbing, those are what I'll put on. But yeah, these uh, vinyl gloves also fit inside those really tight me mechanic gloves really easy as well. So they're really fantastic. And if anything happens, they're disposable. We'll just toss them away and get a new pair. And that's what I use. So we're just walking through Picture Canyon, checking out the scenes. Looking up taking our time, seeing a few more caves up there, up these sheer steep cliffs, see if there's anything interesting. Most of the times we come through here, we're on a mission, you know, we don't really stop and take a look at everything, so there's always something you can miss. There's a lot of land out here, and if there's any evidence of Kenny Beach's disappearance, I'm hoping to find it. No, I don't expect to see him walking towards us and shake our hand. But what if we find a backpack or a piece of trash or something that leads us to his possible final resting place? I don't know. Something in the mystery that gives us a clue as to what may have happened to him. Or maybe he's on a beach in Mexico someplace, kicking back, drinking a beer, watching our videos. And if that's the case, I just hope he's subscribed. Here's another kind of narrow section that's kind of interesting in Picture Canyon. We've got these kind of really colorful rocks on each side. I haven't really seen petroglyphs yet, and like I said, if there are, they're going to look something like this. They're easy to spot if you're looking for them, but if you're not, they're almost invisible. But yeah, this is probably the most narrow section of Picture Canyon right here. All right, still navigating narrow part of Picture Canyon. There's some animal droppings that uh, clearly are fresh. I would say last night, maybe. Something about the size of a Chihuahua. I know, because I have a Chihuahua and I clean up after it. So whatever it is, hopefully we won't run into it and uh, see what appears to be some sort of a large bug. I mean, it's dead and that's fine. It's a beetle of some sort. It's dead. Just saw something black down there, so thought I'd take a look and see what it is. press on we are maybe halfway through picture canyon and at the end of picture canyon is skull canyon which is right next to the covered m cave and those three caves in kenny's video and i'll show you all that once we get there but keep your eyes open for caves i know there's a few up there on the top of the hill but those don't i can assure you those don't go in i can see them from here but if you see anything interesting, by all means, mention in the comments because some of you have seen interesting things and, uh, and I've actually taken trips out here to investigate them. And I just saw a petroglyph up there. So you know what? I'm gonna hike up here, climb this rock and show you. First petroglyph of Picture Canyon. This picture is why they call it Picture Canyon. 
right up there. Can you see it? I don't want to kill myself getting to it, but anyway, it's uh, that's one of the petroglyphs right there. Let's keep on going. All right, so I carefully climb these rocks. Just gonna want to show you that petroglyph up close, and that's it. That's why they call this Picture Canyon. Little things like that are hard to see if you're not looking for them, uh, but they are here, so. Let's carefully get off these rocks and get back down there to the valley and continue on to Picture Canyon. All right, we're coming out of that narrow spot. It's opening up a little bit to uh, the cliff area of Picture Canyon where we have to climb. And I'll show you this, uh, this uh, plant, whatever it is, some place over the path. Over the path. Now clearly it wasn't growing here, and it looked like so many places over the path. And when you commented that uh, Bigfoot or Dogmen or whatever, they do this. Uh, so if you believe in cryptids and you believe that's what they do, then maybe that's what happened. A cryptid put this across the path. Or maybe it was a hiker. Or maybe it was the wind. Or maybe I'm just thinking about this too much, but uh, interesting to hear your opinion as to why this... Uh, all right, this rock provided a nice convenient uh, place to change the batteries in the GoPro. Um, like I said, this this plant, whatever it is, has been placed in the middle of the path for some reason. Some of you have said uh, a cryptids do this, such as Bigfoot or Dogman. I'm not sure I believe in Dogman. I've never heard of any really solid evidence of a Dogman. Uh, as far as Bigfoot, I've yet to see any evidence of Bigfoot. The only Bigfoot out here are the size 12s that make these footprints here. But uh, anyway, mention the comments. Why do you think this is here? I have no idea myself. Wind, uh, another hiker, or even a cryptid. Why do you think this is here? Mention the comments. It'd be interesting to see what people say. Let's uh, press forward. Like I said, we're almost to the mountainous, rocky part of Picture Canyon where we're gonna have to do a little bit of climbing. And just before we do, there's that kind of little cave area. I'm gonna shine the flashlight in and film it and show you what it looks like. Let's press forward. There's always something that makes me feel uneasy about Picture Canyon, especially this section here as we get closer to where that covered M cave is. Maybe it's just an easy ambush spot, but uh, I've always had just kind of an uneasy feeling going out there. Now this, uh, this is not that little cave I was talking about. This is a spot we're gonna have to climb up. And there's no way around it, no easy way around it. We've got to climb over this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll film just to kind of show you. And it's smooth, there's no handheld, so... Yeah, I know it's a weird angle. But uh, I'm climbing up these rocks and uh, trying to get over this. Shit. All right. We've got water spilling out of the camel back. Okay. Oh my goodness. Just a little bit of water spilling out here. It's got a uh, shut off valve, which I didn't shut off and some water spilled out, but that's not a big deal. So there, we climbed up it and you could see there's, there's really no handheld handhold. So it's, it's a tough to climb up this, but not impossible. This right here is what we've got to climb up to get over it. But before we do, I'm gonna show you because here's that inaccessible part of Picture Canyon, that kind of sub canyon. You see this big boulder right there in the middle? Under this is that deep dark cave. Yeah, right inside there. So let me take out my pack and grab the, uh, the night sun, which is that 10,000 lumen Fenix flashlight. And I'm going to shine in there and show you what's in there. Okay. I've got the uh, FedEx LR35R. We're going to go take a look inside here. Now, you remember what Kenny said about this being deep and dark at ground level. But they're, you know, they're not the kind of cave I'm looking for. The kind of cave I'm looking for is, is deep and it's dark and it's, uh, it's shaped like it's, it's shaped just like the letter M. So lots of little caves and stuff along here, and it's about it's about level with the ground, like like right like in an area like this. So I really got to keep my eyes peeled because I don't want to pass it. 
So yeah, that's what he said. He said it's deep, it's dark, it's at ground level. Well, this is the only cave I found out here in Picture Canyon, or anywhere for that matter, that's deep and dark and at ground level. You can see it's ground level, it's deep and it's dark. So, let's turn on the night sun. Let's turn on the night sun. And, and see what's in here. Shit. Oh my. Okay, that weed was moving up there. That scared the crap out of me. Oh my God. I thought it was an animal or something coming at me. Just go to show you. Carefully look at some of these caves because you never know what you'll find. <laughs> I saw that movement, my body almost started vibrating like Kenny V just did. Could this be what Kenny was talking about? It's not in the shape of an M, it's in the shape of an A or a triangle almost. But uh, you could see in there, it goes in about uh, 20, 30 feet maybe. But I sure wouldn't go in there. It's probably animal burrows or something. Who knows what's in there? I could see some spider webs. I'm sure not going to go in there. But yeah, that... Uh, <laughs> There's some, look like some spider sacks or something, but yeah, that, uh, that, uh, spider web with grass or weeds in it was, uh, moving and that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> kind of feel dumb now, but that's fine. Ah, uh, now I can say I found a cave where my body started shaking when I looked in it. But, uh, yeah, I see it moving. That's it. Nothing in here. Let's, uh, let's keep moving. Now, before we go, here's what one of the viewers saw um, just before the cave. You could see like a circle right there. Not really a circle, like a C, I guess. Maybe some other lines in here. It, it looks kind of natural. It's really hard to say. The, uh, the alien rock we saw up on the beast wall is much more distinctive than this. But it's still some markings. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe this is people uh, trying to climb up here. It's really hard to say. But... Uh, Take a look right here, where it looks like water going down. Maybe millions of years, this is water coming down. Maybe, uh, yeah, right here. This is the same kind of indentations uh, that we saw in the alien rock. Um, it's not curved or anything, but in millions of years, maybe water came down here, because that's clearly uh, smoothed out, and dripped down here. So water drips, maybe they were coming down here and formed this, and that's water over millions of years. And... Um, I mean, who knows, maybe that uh, alien rock we saw was formed by water, it just took millions of years to do so. Hard to say. But I have no doubt these rocks and whatnot were here in the time of the dinosaurs. They were certainly here at the time of uh, Native Americans hundreds of years ago. But yeah, that's it. Had our kind of brief scare for the day, hopefully that's it. And uh, we're gonna come around here and where we're going next, Is up and over. So I'm gonna put my pack back on and let's do it. All right, so like I said, we've got to climb up these rocks. Not a big deal. We've done them before, and I'm not gonna roll film the whole way. I've done it. I've done. I roll film many times going up these rocks, so you know, you should know what it looks like in my other videos. But it's kind of like climbing a set of stairs, only there's marbles on it. Um, but yeah, we got to come up here, over there, and then up at the top over there. Not too difficult, but it's one you want to kind of be careful because you can lose your balance and fall down there. It's it's a mistake that can happen. Um, but without further ado, let's carefully watch our footing, not slip, and climb up these rocks over Picture Canyon and beyond. We've reached the top, it wasn't that difficult, but it can be tricky. And no, I'm not gonna climb this hill wearing uh, vinyl gloves. I did put the mechanics on, but the vinyl gloves do make a good liner to keep your hands warm. Because you climb a hill like this, you wanna maintain at least three, if not four points of contact. And yes, I can maintain four points of contact even with the GoPro. Some of you have asked about the helmet cam and why I don't uh, use a helmet cam. Well, look, I can move the GoPro around like this I can stretch it out. I can even drop the GoPro and it's fully tethered. You can't get this close to the helmet cam. Thing is, you can just see better angles with this uh, floaty stick I use for the GoPro. So that's why I use it. Now you can see over there, those white specks, that's snow. 
on the side of the mountain. So I would imagine it would have been really beautiful out here when it was full of snow, but a lot of it's melted. You could see Mount Charleston range out there. Uh, the snow's starting to get melted a little bit, but uh, a week or two ago, there was, there was some pretty good snow out there, even here, but a lot of it melts quickly during the day because it warms up somewhat. So right now I'm just kind of looking around. Now up there I can see kind of a rock ledge and uh, it looks like an excellent place where there would be some caves. You can't really tell unless you get up to it. And um, I'd like to go up there and check it out. Maybe on the way back, we'll see how I feel. Um, Cause that would be kind of nice even to just to see the views up there at Picture Canyon. Uh, to see if there's any caves up there. Cause there could easily be a deep cave up there that we're not seeing. Um, from down here so you got to climb the hill but it can it can be a little risky um because we are of course alone out here and i could also exert a lot of your energy so i'm focusing my energy on getting the job done which is skull canyon and that should be up there just uh down picture canyon a little bit once we get over this hill get that down in the valley it should be relatively smooth sailing all the way to skull canyon which is right behind the covered m cave and i'll show you that up close too once we're there so you gotta watch out for cactus there's some more cactus Carefully watch where you're putting your feet and uh, navigate these rocks carefully so you don't slide down because it is a long way down. And if you fall, it's just not a good thing. The GoPro has the tether, I don't. Pockets of snow. Carefully watching where I put my feet so that I don't step on a loose rock and fall. That would not be good. Because I can assure you there's no cell signal down there. And if I fell, I would be entirely on my own. That's why I'm just trying to be careful, take my time, and not take risks. And I know coming out here is a risk, but I'm just trying to be careful doing so. All right, that's where Picture Canyon opens up. This spot is what I call the stairs, because it looks like a set of stairs going down. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna walk down, like I said, the stairs and continue with the openness of Picture Canyon. And from there on out, it should be an easy hike to that uh, Skull Canyon and the Covered M Cave. I wasn't going to, but I'm gonna roll film on this just, just to kind of show you how tricky it can be on these rocks. So you can see a lot of loose rocks. That's what you gotta watch where you're stepping. And if you're careful, it could be just like a set of stairs or a ladder. You just need to watch where you're uh, stepping. Make sure you've got a good handhold and uh, maintain three to four points of contact. And as long as you take your time and you're careful, it's, it's not that bad. Just kind of want to scan the area, look for the easiest way down. One where there's not a lot of loose rocks and just kind of ease yourself down. Of course, it does help to be in shape. One of the things I recently bought was a, uh, a TRX system for the home gym. And it's really great because one of the things you could do with it is you could do squats. You're constantly going up and down like this. And that's that's really helped a lot for for climbing over some of these rocks where you're kind of squatting. Uh, it makes it a lot easier going down or going up. Almost there. And with a hop, skip, and a jump, we're there. Let's keep going. Things have opened up significantly since we uh, have climbed over that area in Picture Canyon. Got about two and a half miles on the clock, hour and 40 minutes, almost a thousand foot elevation gain. So keep in mind all that is in addition to from the Las Vegas trip, maybe an hour, hour and 20 minute drive, followed by another, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes on dirt. And then you could start this two and a half mile hike. So it's 
it's very remote. You can't just say you're gonna fly to Las Vegas, get a hotel, put on a pair of tennis shoes and walk out here. It's, uh, it's quite a ways out and it's something you wanna be prepared for. And as you could see with those cactus spikes earlier in the video, tennis shoes just aren't gonna cut out here. You've gotta have, have thick boots. You gotta be dressed properly for this area. It's beautiful. It's an easy hike. It's, it's great weather. It's not cold. But make no mistake, this is a brutal, unforgiving place. And if you have to spend the night out here, it's going to be cold beyond belief. I can assure you of that. All right, picture canyons open up in a wider desert. We're seeing piles of snow. You can see snow off in the distance of the mountains up there. We're almost where we're supposed to go, where that covered M cave is and Skull Canyon, that rugged canyon right next to it that we're gonna try to explore today. On the clock, 2.74 miles, that's two and three quarter miles, hour and 46 minutes, just over a thousand foot elevation gain. You can see there's a lot more snow on the ground and it's noticeably colder in the, here. We're also out of the sun, but still it's a little bit colder here. And I don't have cold weather gear. I've got my standard desert gear, but as long as I keep moving, I don't think we're gonna need cold weather gear. We have to spend the night out here. That's a whole different story. So that's why I'm trying to be careful. And uh, going back, it should be all downhill and it won't be that big a deal. But for right now, we're just doing this slight uphill incline and uh, trying to just keep on going. Like I said, we're seeing a lot more snow. Um, I don't think it's cold enough for that heavy parker we had on the last video. Hidden cabin, and I don't think it's cold enough for that uh, Reebok thermal insulated shirt that I brought. But I'm glad I had it because if something happens, we had to spend the night out here. We need every bit of warmth we could possibly get, and that shirt will be appreciated. But for now, we're gonna traverse the snow with desert boots, and I know they're not optimal, but uh, we're gonna keep on going and we are almost to the covered M, ca covered M cave. Not really covered M cave, but people say it's the M cave that's been covered up. I'm trying to get some close up video so you can be the judge. And it shouldn't be too much further. That's a little weird for some seeing snow like this in the desert. And these boots are not waterproof, so I'm trying not to get them too much snow on them. The last thing I need is wet feet. I think we've arrived, but I'm gonna go up a little bit just to make sure. We've arrived at our destination. So just over three miles from the truck, it's a significant hike. Um, I try to keep it shaped so it's not that big a deal for me. You could see little bits of snow on these mountains still. Um, wind's blowing a little bit, so it is cold. Uh, because I've been moving, I'm not cold enough for a jacket. And I'm glad I don't have one because the sweat would build up. But where we are is the exact spot in Kenny's video where he saw Skull Canyon. So I'm gonna start with these little pocket caves here. Many of you have pointed these out in Kenny's video. You pointed them out in my video saying, oh, there's caves there. Well, let's take a close look and I'll show you they're not caves. They don't go in very far. So here's the first one. And you can see it doesn't go in. Here's a bunch of animal droppings. 
Maybe a big, uh, yeah, maybe a bighorn sheep has been coming in here and sleeping here at night. It's hard to say. Um, obviously been pooping in their own bed, but if that's the case. But anyway, first cave goes in a foot or two. It's not even a cave. Let's come down here to the second cave. I'm going to show you. I don't trip here. This one doesn't go in. There's a spider web and it doesn't go in at all. So these caves from a distance look like they might go in, but they're what, one or two feet? That's, that's it, that's as far as it goes in. Now coming down over here, I'm gonna show you, is what some have said is the covered up MK. They said, oh, the MK's been found, but it's covered up. And uh, right there. And it almost looks like somebody was here and chipped away on a rock. Was that you, Jay Chuck? I don't see the rock, but it was chipped away. But here is where somebody looks like may have chipped away some of the rock. And there it is. Is this a covered M cave? You can see up close this material that people say is the covered M cave. Um, here's a piece of rock that's been chipped away. Uh, that's a crack or crevice. It doesn't really go in. And up over here, This is what people are saying is the M cave, the covered M cave, but it's not. It's very clearly um, a natural formation. Well, I don't know where this piece of rock is that was clearly here. I'm assuming somebody chipped away to find out once and for all if this is a covered M cave. We come down here, look at it. It almost looked like the M cave has been covered up. Uh, and it certainly does look like it's been covered up, but I can assure you it hasn't. This is all rock. And, I showed you up close, coming over here, you can see how it fits kind of perfectly down here, up the sides, and in there. Yeah, there, there's, I don't see any way, there's just no way. And look at this rock right here, and look right here, it's the same kind of material. So no, this is, this is not a covered M cave, I'm sure of it. So for those who said there is M cave exists, just covered up, well, there you have it right there. I don't think it's it. But, but, there is a clue out here and that's the whole reason we've came. So right down here, around this corner, is Gold Canyon. It's a rugged little side canyon The Kenny Beach said he goes into canyons like this. And it may have been the one clue that leads us to a piece of evidence in disappearance. So Kenny was standing right around, maybe he's standing on this rock. He's standing right here and he was pointing or talking about this canyon. He said, that's where I found my skulls. It goes on up in there, it's kind of cool. I like going up in stuff like that because that's where I find my skulls. So yeah, inside there, um, he said the side canyon, he likes to go into places like this and because that's where he finds his skulls. Did he mean that's where we'll find his skull? I've never been in here. I don't know if anybody else has ever been in there. Um, you could see some outcroppings or maybe some small caves, but inside there, I have no idea what's in there. Never been in there. We've always been out here for other reasons. But this side canyon, Skull Canyon, is the whole reason we came out here today. So if you're ready, let's head in there slowly and carefully and see what we can find in Skull Canyon. I knew it's going to be rugged. I knew it's going to be rocks we've got to climb over. Um, so we're going to carefully go in there and uh, see if we can find anything. It's a rugged place, no doubt, but sometimes the uh, best prizes are found on the most difficult paths. Now keep your eyes peeled for anything I missed. And if you see anything, by all means mention in the comments. I'm not saying you're gonna see the remains of Kenny Beach, sitting up here somewhere, although that's always a possibility. But you may see something that I missed. 
So again, if, uh, if I had a helmet cam, this is what you'd be seeing. You'd be seeing me watch my step, but with this floaty stick, you could see everything. Now I did a Google Earth recon, and this rugged canyon looks like it goes up to a Y. But I can't really tell on Google Earth how rugged this is. And there's a lot of features, land features, that you can't really see on Google Earth. It's just not clear. Yeah, it's some rugged stuff here for sure. See something like this, what you gotta do is try and find the easiest and safest way up. And it looks like I'm gonna have to walk on the side of these rocks like Spider-Man. Fortunately, the soles of these Sole and boots are soft and they grip these rocks very well. Let's keep going. Sometimes you gotta slowly walk up on these rocks. Sometimes you gotta get a running start. And just use momentum to help get you up. There's some pocket caves up there. And you know, if, if Kenny did end it, he could have crawled into one of those caves and somehow took his life. But I'm not gonna climb up these mountains and check every single cave, it's just not feasible. Well, I knew it wouldn't be an easy climb, so like I said, we're just kinda trying to take our time and climb over this the best we can. If it was summer I worry about snakes but I'm not expecting to see any in this colder weathers. Now here's another rock with some strange markings and lines on it. Kind of like that alien rock. I see something like this makes me think it's natural. Um, I don't know, millions of years ago, did this rocket dislodge and come down the water? Or was water dripping down here and making these lines in the rock? I'm beginning to think that may have what happened. And the alien rock, or those alien symbols, could have been formed over the course of millions of years. No idea. Any geologists? I'd be interested in hearing what your opinion is on that. Just looking all around, trying to see if there's anything interesting, anything notable in here. There could be something behind this bush and we'd miss it if we're not looking carefully. I'm trying to watch my steps so I don't twist an ankle or break a bone or something. Carefully finding my footing, lifting myself up. Looking at these rocks and this gravel. This canyon was clearly formed by rushing water. So I'm just gonna need a little momentum. <sighs> it's definitely off the beaten path. And providing they're not gonna expect any flash floods, this uh, kind of flat spot here would be a perfect place to pitch a tent. Where it's off the beaten path, down there where hikers are, and you could have a, not really shelter, but somewhat protected because of this tree. Flat place to camp. If you had a backpack tent and whatnot. And this canyon keeps going, so let's keep on going and see what we can find up there. If there is anything at all. 
keep in mind my videos may not always be interesting or non-stop action and adventure but they're real as they happen and i want you to feel like you're here with me because in a way you are if you're watching but everything you see is real and keep in mind i could easily stage something out here just to make things interesting and get more viewers and likes but i don't do that my videos are honest so whatever you see is absolutely as it happens i've never been here before um and anything you see is not my doing i don't think we've hit the y yet where it looks like the valley kind of splits off although this could be it now here's something interesting the stacked rock i'm 99 percent sure this wasn't put here naturally. And last time I checked, mountain lions, bighorn, sheep, and coyotes don't stack rocks. Which means somebody was in here. And why? How long has it been here? Did Kenny himself stack that rock? Was it J. Chuck? Jeff Claw? Somebody else, one of the other YouTubers perhaps? Hard to say. But like I said, I've never been here, so it clearly wasn't me that stacked those two rocks. Somebody did. Oh, it looks like it's even more rugged up there, but that's where we gotta go. I'm getting a little hungry, but we got a good 30 minutes before noon. I heard the wind over there sound like a vehicle coming up, but that's just simply not possible. I will more than likely turn back around noon. That's about 30 minutes from now, if I don't stop to eat somewhere. I can keep going, but uh, if I don't see anything significant by noon, I may turn back. I said I'm not rushing, I'm just uh, taking my time trying to see if there's anything interesting out here in Skull Canyon. Simply because Kenny Beach said this is where he finds his skulls, places like this, and he likes to go in places like this, so you be the judge. Was it a clue? I don't know. But if this is the place where Kenny may have gone, and I want to go here too and see what's in here. It's a little tricky to climb, but I think it's doable. Okay, you can see it up there, it looks like what well, could be a cave or an outcropping. I'm trying to make it to it straight ahead. And uh, there's two little cavities above it. If, I don't know if you can see it, but I can. It's likely nothing, but I'm gonna go up there and check it out. So there's that little outcrop I said could be a cave. I don't know what's up there. And uh, you can see how rugged this place is. That's where we've come. I've gone through stuff like this before, but we're gonna keep going a little further and see if there's anything up there.
just trying to find the easiest path forward and take as few risks as possible. Yeah, I can see right now it's not a cave. It's an outcropping. But who knows what's just beyond it. That's the, uh, the thing that's kind of addicting about coming out here is you never know what's just beyond the next corner, the next turn. Now look over there on that rock, directly in the center of the screen. There's a small rock on top of a rock. And um, yeah, I could have got there naturally, but I don't see how. I don't see why somebody would have put it there unless it's a marker. And to the right of it, it looks like you might be able to climb up there. So on the way back, I'm gonna try to climb up there and get a better a view of this whole area, Skull Valley here. I could see off in the distance, up on the side of a hill, a small pocket cave. Um, you're not supposed to have drones out here, but if you did have one, if I ever did bring a drone out here, that's what I wouldn't want to check because little caves like that, almost inaccessible. It's just almost vertical climbing to it. So let's go forward and uh, get over this corner and some of this ruggedness and see if there's anything up here around the bend. And if I can find an easy way up there to check out where that boulder is, we will. You've got to be careful for this kind of stuff because this will jab you and it's very it's a lot thicker than it looks that's uh it's like uh, knives or needles and if you're not looking you turn your head and boom you're in trouble which is why you need all your wits about you when you come out here on hikes like this mistakes could be made i'm gonna try to get as high as i can to that high vantage point and see what's over the hill that's my goal I think we can come right up here and go right that way. So let's do it. Not that bad. Just gotta be careful that you don't lose your footing around here. And I'm changing the GoPro the other hand so I can uh, hold on right here and watch where I'm stepping. Because that is Got a long way down, but definitely long enough to get hurt. We're high enough, you can see Mount Charleston out in the distance. And uh, that's where I want to go, it's right up there to that high vantage point and see what's on the other side. So at this point, there's two ways to go. This way, which you could see some uh, branches or whatnot blocking our way up here, or somehow right up here. And that's where we're going to go to get up there and make our way over. It's, uh, it's a little tricky because you can see some loose rocks. So what I'm gonna do is find a place with three points of contact, try to avoid contacting things like this, and uh, carefully get myself up here without falling down. Sometimes that means backtracking a little bit to find a good spot to get up. Get a good handhold. Pull myself up, come along these rocks, try not to fall, try not to get my clothes caught on these rocks, and uh, come up a little bit more. You can see my uh, foot right there, and some of these loose rocks. Now I've got four points of contact. And what happens sometimes is you may get up and get yourself in a situation where there's no safe way to go, which means you gotta backtrack a little. Notice I'm stepping where there is no loose rocks. I'm avoiding bushes. Grabbing bushes for a foothold and pulling myself up. And there. You just gotta be careful. And it should be a fairly direct, uh, path right over there over these kind of loose rocks that I think we can get a good foothold on and if something like this 
the rocks can move. It's more stable there. You think of hiking as a no-brainer, but you really got to have your wits about you. Um, Kenny Beach used to push his body. No food, no water. And he may have been delirious at some point. And uh, if that's the case, and he made one mistake and fell, he could have hurt himself, broken a leg, and not got out of here. That's why... You look in these uh, little canyons and valleys, it's not out of the question to see uh, a set of bones if that if that is what happened to him. And him getting into trouble some far off spot out here is what uh, many of the authorities suspect could have happened, which is why we're carefully walking around to see any evidence. Now water's been coming down here over the past eight years since he disappeared. And right down there, you can see that gravel he could have fallen right here. He could have been down there. He could have broke a leg and not got out of there. And that could have been the final resting spot. And if there was water coming down, his bones could have been covered up. Just a, a theory, if that is what happened to him. And I'm going to do my best to avoid having a scenario like that happen to me. So we'll come around and I want to get on that little ridge line there see what's on the other side and that's it a wall of rocks that I got to climb up somehow to see what is on the other side we haven't quite made it over yet but uh, here's some strange material um, we found this in some other parts of desert national wildlife refuge and I've been told this is this is a, a living organism a very sensitive living organism so I'm not going to touch it um, but it's, some, it's something along the lines, like a, a fungus or something. But uh, at any rate, it's it's something out here that I've seen in a few other spots. And uh, I'm just going to stay away from it. But yeah, this ridge line. Let's go up here. See if we can climb up here. Feel like climbing some rocks? Really? Okay, let's do it. Can't really get a good handhold, but I'm gonna try to lift myself up. Okay, and these rocks are slippery. Uh, I don't know if this was a good idea. Why'd you tell me you wanted to climb rocks? Now, a lot of these rocks are like sandpaper, but this right here is clearly smoothed by water and it's not. You want to look for stuff like this that gives you a great foothold, whereas the smooth stuff does not. Now we could go up there, but this is where we're going. So I'm going to put my foot right here, right here. Lift ourselves up. We're almost to the top. And there. This might be the Y that I've seen on Google Earth. It's sure is beautiful up here. Looks like a whole other valley, whole other world up here, like another planet. I know you want to see what's out here as much as I do. If Kenny said he wanted to go to some out of the way place, this certainly looks like it. What's over that little hill right there? We're gonna come up over that hill and find out. I'm looking for any kind of caves or anything interesting out here. You never know what you'll find. Two and a half hours on the clock, three and a quarter miles. You know, right here the ground's relatively flat. But yeah, there could be anything out here. It's exploring. And uh, people, the few people that do come to Picture Canyon, chances are they don't come in these small, remote, out of the way places.
Now it's kind of weird, this rock that I'm standing on, I can almost, I can kind of feel my feet sinking as I walk. It's very soft soil. You see my feet kind of sinking a little bit there? It's almost like you're walking on a carpet. It's a weird feeling. It's very soft, so if somebody or something was out here, no doubt there would be footprints, but I'm not seeing any. Almost the top of this hill. It's just a little valley in here. Let's keep going, see what's in this little valley. Looks like it'd be a good camping spot. Well, this is clearly a place where water runs during the rains and it rained really heavy once or twice a year so if this was like uh, the pacific northwest this would be significantly deeper because up there it rains a lot more often kind of weird I'm out here three and a half miles from the nearest road which are 30 miles from the Las Vegas Strip it's extremely remote I'm by myself and you're sitting at home maybe drinking a soda or a cup of coffee having a snack watching my videos wondering what's gonna happen next well I'll tell you what I'm also wondering what's gonna happen next but I'm gonna keep going and see what we're going to find out here. There may be nothing, or you never know. It's not another question to find something really spectacular. Christmas tree. Still traversing rocks here in Skull Canyon. Now that we made it to the canyon, I'm just letting nature be our guide. And if our destiny is to find something, some clue related to Kenny Veach or otherwise, then so be it. But uh, at this point, I've gone where I wanted to go. So I'm just pushing further to see what's in, what's out here. And it's possible we'll find nothing. Or it's possible we'll find something related to Kenny, I don't know. Now the sun's coming out and it's starting to get a little warmer than it was down in the valley where all that snow was. Which is good. I've got uh, 10 to 12 and we've got a healthy three and a half mile hike back. So more than likely I'm going to stop for lunch somewhere. I can do three and a half miles but it'd be a lot easier not to do it on an empty stomach. So let's keep going a little bit further and uh, see what's up here. I think I see right down there that rock with those lines on it. That's just like the alien rock, alien symbol. And the more I see it, I'm wondering if this is created by water over millions of years. Because this is clearly an area where water comes down. And maybe the type of rock is more susceptible to, to water going over it like that. I don't know. Now, just beyond those hills right over, that's Wild Horse Pass. And over Wild Horse Pass, of course, is the, the mine where Kenny Veach was standing. So Kenny did say in his final video, he pointed Wild Horse Pass, talked about coming over Wild Horse Pass and down through this valley, which he described Picture Canyon. So he talked about coming this way. Um, his last hike, where he said he'd go overnight, I don't know. Um, that leads me to believe he could have gone long range. Or maybe he just want to come out here and do some more hiking overnight. Either way, his final video, this is more or less where he said he was going. Which is why we're here. 
And I don't necessarily expect anything to be right here where water goes, but I'm looking up on these hills to see if there's anything interesting, anything worth going up there for. Yeah, it might be a little rugged in there. Let's try to go around it. A lot of you, a lot of the, a lot of the viewers have said you can't hike like this anymore. Either you're older, you may be handicapped, or you don't, you just don't have the ability, or you don't live in the area. So you like, you love coming out here, and you and you live through these videos, and I think that's awesome. I really do. That's why I keep making them. As long as you guys keep subscribing and saying you like these videos, I'll keep making them. And I think it's really awesome that somebody who isn't able to do this can sit in the comfort of their own home and enjoy the outdoors. Like you're right here with me. Because you kind of are. That's why I kind of speak in second person. Because I'm here and if you're watching, you're here too. starting to get more rugged and I'm just not seeing anything so I think I'm gonna go up there a little bit if there's nothing significant I'm gonna backtrack and go up on this hillside over there and once I get to those rocks up on top I'm gonna look for a place for lunch let's do it here's hear that like a crow or something There it is again. It's the only sign of life I've seen or heard out here so far. It's a peaceful place. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. There's nothing up there. Like I said, I'm gonna go on top of this hill and look for a place to uh, take a rest and eat some lunch. This is as far as we're gonna go. I'm just not seeing anything up there. It looks like just a wash uh, canyon that's formed by water over millions of years. Uh, I don't see any caves or structures or anything up there. So, I've got, I've got noon on the clock, it's time for lunch. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna backtrack a little bit, but I'm gonna come up over the hill. And uh, like I said, you get oriented, you can see Wild Horse Pass over there. Those snow covered mountains in the sheep range. I'm gonna come up this hill and try to find some somewhat sheltered place on, on a hillside to have lunch. And, uh, that's about it. No signs of anything related to Kenny Beach so far, but I mean, look around. It's, it's a needle in a haystack. There could be a bone sticking out of a, a wash somewhere. You wouldn't even see it. A backpack or a piece of trash from Kenny and you wouldn't see it. If he even came out here at this point, everything is just theories. So let's keep going over this hill. And uh, I think we may come down a different way. We may come down a different way in the Picture Canyon than, than Skull Canyon, because Skull Canyon is down there and I think it kind of goes off to the right in the Picture Canyon. We're gonna go up on that hillside right there, orient ourselves and see if there's in a different way, kind of expand our search area. I'm looking for any kind of caves or anything up in these hills that's worth hiking up to. Uh, I'm not seeing anything so far. The winds are picking up a little bit, but it's not cold, I'm not cold. Uh, the sun's out. Like I said, at night it would be a very different story, but right now it's, it's a little chilly, but it's, it's fine for hiking. So let's keep going up this rugged terrain, find a place for lunch. We've got cold beef stew on tap. So far, Skull Canyon, I haven't found anything. Kenny Beach said that's where he finds the skulls. I hadn't found any. The only skull we found out here was in a small canyon on top of the beast. But I haven't seen anything out here. It's weird seeing rocks like this in the middle, middle of the open. There's a rock on uh, on the other side of um, these mountains here, way, way out in Jome Valley, middle of nowhere. That's got some petroglyphs on it. This one clearly doesn't. It doesn't have smooth surfaces. Really came from way up there. You can see like little pocket caves up there, but I'm not gonna exert energy to climb up to them if they don't look promising. I 
this may be a decent way to come down over here. But first, I'm going to walk along here to that point over there, look down in the picture cannon, and try to find some place for lunch. Even if we don't find anything related, Kenny, look how beautiful this area is. Straight out there is Wild Horse Pass, uh, Agave Burn Pit down in that valley somewhere. Over there is the uh, the Sword Killers Hideout, um, branded by Jay Silverheels, I think it was. Basically, um, I think it was Scott Nuttall found a um, a tent and a sword that was kind of made into from a bamboo uh, a stick of bamboo. Somebody made like a, a sword. He found out there, and his idea was that Kenny was killed by a rogue hiker, mysterious swordsman out here, and that was his hideout. Um, Far-fetched, absolutely no evidence that's what happened, but uh, at any rate, he did find a tent and a, a sword out there, so that's why they call him the Sword Killer's Hideout. Um, out here on these cliffs, it's it's beautiful. It's it's a it's chilly day for hiking, it's cold, but it's otherwise perfectly fine as long as you keep moving. Still looking for a place to take a break for lunch. And that'll come in good time. But for now, we're just coming out here to the end of this uh, kind of ridge line to that rock outcrop, rock point, not outcrop, rock point. And uh, see if we can get a good view in a picture canyon. Now, I like to come to these high advantage points because I clearly you can see a lot more than you can from the ground. Yeah, picture canyon down there. Look at that, who needs a drone when you can climb a mountain and see the same thing? That's Skull Canyon down there. That's Picture Canyon. And just beyond the jagged rocks is the, uh, the covered M cave. It's windy up here, and I don't want to lose my footing and fall off. But I'll show you what I could see. Like I said, this is the back of uh, where the covered M cave is supposed to be. Covered M cave is right directly in front of us, where these kind of rock, uh, rock uh, monoliths, whatever they are, are kind of sticking up here. Um, interesting place geologically. Um, does it support the existence of a cave? It's, it's hard to say, uh, but it is an interesting place. As far did Kenny come into this uh, Skull Canyon? I'll let you be the judge, but one thing you can deny, he could be anywhere. Any nook and cranny crevice out here, out of way place, clearly has not been searched by search or rescue. So he could have come in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here, it looks fairly easy to come down there to that ridge line over there and get on top of those rocks and look at a picture canyon. And maybe somewhere over there we'll find a place to, uh, out of the wind where we can have lunch. And then we'll start making our way to picture canyon on out of here. But uh, anything along the way we'll take a look and look at. And as always, if you see something in the video that I missed, please comment down below. And um, who knows, maybe we'll make another expedition out here if it's significant. Okay, I've got 10 after 12. And uh, this little kind of back of a rock looks like a good place to stop for lunch. Uh, the sun's coming from the east, so this is kind of a windbreak. It's in the sun to keep us warm, and we can see a nice view of the whole valley out there. So yeah, this is where I'm gonna break for lunch. All right, lunch is done, and I just finished up the live stream. So like I said in the live stream video, I was able to pull a signal up here, and uh, two, maybe three bars, but that way off in the distance line, if you could see it, is the highway. So. I'm clearly we're in clear line of sight of the cell towers. I feel much better after lunch and um, that beef stew that I ate and hit the spot it was much better than crunchy lasagna and it's going to be one of my new favorites so yeah I'm going to have to buy some of that again. Hope you enjoyed the live stream and uh, like I said I just want to give you guys a, a quick sneak preview of the video that we're making right now and uh, show you what's in it. And like I said in the live stream, I told you what we saw so far, but what we're going to see now is your guess is as good as mine. Our plan is to go towards that ridge line, get up on that ridge line, even those high rocks if we can, safely, of course, and um, get down back into Picture Canyon and get out of here. That's the plan. So uh, it was a nice spot for lunch. The winds died down a little bit, so let's, let's keep going.
I know some of you have said, be careful, it's dangerous out here, and it is. And yes, I am alone. Yes, I am three miles from my truck, but I do have a cell signal, and then that means I can also be tracked on GPS. I am being tracked on GPS. And um, if something happens, people will know exactly where I am. So it's where we live in these days. You can get away, but you're never really away. But that being said, it's still a very majestic place out here. It's, it's almost like a religious experience, kind of knowing there's full well, knowing full well that uh, nobody's out here. It's just you and the elements, you and nature. And as beautiful and peaceful it is, it could be an unforgiving place, which is why you've got to be prepared. Kenny Beach pushed himself. No food, no water. That's not how I roll. I need to eat. I drink water to stay hydrated. And when I go home tonight, I'm going to take a nice hot shower and have a big meal somewhere. But for right now, our main goal is to get out of here safely. Getting closer to that ridge line, looks like there might even be a cave or two up there, hard to say. But I'm going to explore this ridge line and uh, get a view of Picture Canyon, so we'll see what it's like over there. And as always, I'm going to do it safely. I was thinking about coming out here, it looks like a straight shot, but once you get closer, you can see there's like a little ravine we got to get through. Not a huge deal, I think we can get to it. Definitely a difficult train up here. The hills high above Picture Canyon that is down below. And this stuff here, this is this is a piece of cake, just like coming down a set of stairs. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really easy. But some of the other stuff you've got to climb could be challenging. So you see me moving the camera and scanning. What I'm doing is trying to find an easy, safe place to get uh, from point A to point B without any obstacles. And also to see if there's anything interesting out here. So as always, keep your eyes open. If you see something I don't, mention the comments. Um, these are as much as your hikes as they are mine. That's interesting. Ice cream cone, anyone? Clearly a piece of a plant, but it's kind of an interesting shape. Let's navigate these rocks down in this little uh, draw here. Again, these rough rocks are like sandpaper, so it's very easy to step on them without losing your balance, but you can still twist an ankle if you're not careful, which is why I have the best possible boots that I can get my hands on. And up on that ridge line where I want to go to see what kind of a viewpoint we can get. I don't think it's a cave, but I keep looking at that crevice over there. It looks like it goes in a little bit. So I, I'm going to try to go over there and check it out and see what's in there. But for right now, let's let's get to the top of this ridge line and see what kind of a view we're looking at. Might as well just roll film on this one. Watch where we're going, of course, as always getting into trouble out here and becoming incapacitated would not be a good thing. All right. Almost to the top. Drum roll. And here we are. Picture Canyon. That's Picture Canyon. That's the far end of Picture Canyon. Here we are high above it. Venture over here and peek in that crevice. All right, so picture canyon down there and uh, right over here, that's the um, little enclave that we're gonna go check. And then we're gonna come down here into Skull Canyon and go out the same way into Skull Canyon, like a big loop. But uh, first I gotta change this GoPro battery. All right, fresh GoPro battery. You're looking at picture canyon down there. Uh, there's like a little crevice I want to look inside because it looks like I might go in. And then we're going to make it down our way down here, uh, down back into Skull Canyon. Come out Skull Canyon by the uh, covered up M cave the same way we came in. And then make our way back to Picture Canyon. So it would have been really cool to keep a camera up here and, and film us walking through Picture Canyon. But that would mean we'd have to come all the way back up. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. Traverse these rocks carefully. Check out that little crevice, see if there's anything over here, and then come back down through that little valley there through these rugged rocks. And they are very rugged. Just putting on my other glove here. 
Now you know why I wear these uh, vinyl gloves, because whenever I use electronics, I'm having to take my uh, gloves off. They're supposed to be compatible with touch screens, but um, they generally don't work very well. All right. Now, if this was uh, the summertime, I'd be worried about snakes and critters like that, or even Gila monsters. Evidently, they're out here too. It's a poisonous lizard. But in the wintertime, those critters should all be in the ground and shouldn't be much of a concern. We got a little bit of snow over here. These spots of snow is generally places where the sun doesn't come out very often. Or if it does, it's later in the day, as you can see, right up there in the sky. So it's not shining directly on the snow. Um, and later in the day when it's warmer, it doesn't have a really chance to melt. You notice I'm touching these rocks before I put my full weight on them so I don't step on one that's loose and end up falling. So here's this little enclave that I saw. And it looks like it go in and it really doesn't, but it is kind of uh, surrounded on three sides. So while it doesn't go in, it's kind of a cool little place. But uh, I don't know if I'd see here during the rain, but it might be a cool shelter. Unless the wind is blowing directly in here. But yeah, this is it. It's kind of a cool little enclave. I could go up there, but there's really no reason. So we're going to come down and around back into Skull Canyon and see if we can safely get out of here. Just looking at about a three and a half mile hike to get back to the truck. Before we head out, I just want to take one more look up here. Just get a view, pull a cell signal, and uh, check a few things. And then we'll head back into uh, Skull Canyon. Again, this rock like sandpaper, so... We should get a pretty good grip as we climb and pull ourselves up to the top. And the whole ridge line. Now I have to come back down, just uh, I want to climb up there and pull a signal and do an upload or two and uh, get out of here. So don't let the fact that I have cell service uh, mislead you into thinking that this isn't very remote. I can assure you it is remote. It's about 30 miles from Las Vegas Strip and about three and a half miles hike on foot over obviously rugged terrain. And anything could happen. Um, got 1.30 on the clock, three hours so far. We did pause for lunch, of course, uh, but the sun's getting lower in the sky, which means uh, probably 5.30ish, it's gonna get dark. I expect to be out of here well before that, but just in case something happens, I wanna keep moving because the sun's out, it's not that bad. But uh, at night, once it gets darker, I assure you it's gonna get very cold out here, so I do not wanna be stuck out here at night or when it gets dark. I've got a thermal shirt in the backpack and I've got a survival blanket, so I could probably make it. But, but if I did survive, it would be one of the most uncomfortable nights in my life, no doubt. So this is clearly that why that I saw on Google Earth uh, for Skull Canyon. So down there, that's the route we went up there, over this mountain. And then right here is the, um, the Y on the left side that I saw on Google Earth for Skull Canyon. I didn't see anything in here when I did that, uh, that Google Earth recon. But a lot of times, Google Earth can be misleading. So that's why you really gotta get out here on foot and check some of these places out. And I'm keeping my eyes open for anything related to the Kennedy Beach disappearance, but my first priority is to be safe and get out of here alive. So I rely on you, my viewers, to point out anything I may have missed. Because so I can, will, and have come back out here based on some of the comments you guys have made. And 
if you go too fast or you're not paying attention, it's easy to step on some loose rocks like that one right there. And if you put too much weight on it, you're gonna fall. And you fall and hit your head on something like this, it's all over. Let's just carefully get out of here. I think that's rock I saw earlier, what looks like a rock on top of a rock. And looking at it now, it looks like it may have been just eroded up there. I don't think it's something put up there. That's uh, several hundred pounds of a rock that somebody would have to lift and put up there. So I think uh, it was up there from natural means. But some of the things you see around here can be misleading. They look like there's something and they're actually not. So let's keep going through the rugged wilderness of Skull Canyon, a place where Kenny Beach may have gone. And if this was his final resting place, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack and almost impossible to find anything. So we'd have to get really lucky. Good thing is from here on out, it should be all downhill, all the way to the truck, which will make traveling a little bit faster and easier. Right now, we're just navigating down this hill and trying not to slip like that. Almost there, this is the Y. The Y of Skull Canyon. And that's where we went, you remember that rugged area? That's where we went up. So we made a loop and ended back at this spot. All right. <clears throat> I don't wanna step down and put my full weight on something unless I'm 100% sure there's, it's not gonna move. Which is why I kind of hesitate a little bit. Even then, you saw that one move right there. So you just gotta really be careful. But another stack of rocks, same one we saw when we came in. Somebody stacked it. Somebody's clearly been through here, and that wasn't me. But I saw no evidence of people up there, no footprints, nothing. So it's possible it could have been there for years. Not out of the question. All right. All right, almost out. That should be a picture canyon just ahead. Just navigate a few rocks and we're there. Almost there. Watching where we step. Hop, skip, and a jump. And we're the main wash. Oh, yes. I don't know about you, but I've had about enough of Skull Canyon for one day. Let's get through Picture Canyon. Then we gotta navigate a mile and a half to open desert. Then we gotta drive about 10 miles down a dirt road. Then about 20 miles or so, and we're home. So we got a long way to get there. But don't turn off the video now, because if you watch my other videos, for some strange reason, the most interesting things seem to happen towards the end. So we're gonna keep walking. And if I see anything interesting, I'm gonna film it. Here's the snow. I think you know who size 12s those are. Entering little pockets in the uh, in the cliff face there. That's it, heading into Picture Canyon. Slight downhill incline, making things a little bit easier. There's so much to see in this place. In Picture Canyon alone, there's so much to see. Look up at those cliffs. There's uh, there's pocket caves, there's all kind of stuff up there. I wish I could climb up there and see everything. I wish I could legally bring a drone out here. And I know a lot of saying, who's gonna find out, who's gonna find out? Well, all it takes is one, one park ranger watching my video, seeing that I brought a drone out here and uh, it's all over, so. I don't know if they really make a big deal out of it, but uh, 
You just have to find a seat in this stuff yourself. Now take a look at my footprints there. That was me walking, at least I'm assuming it was me. So if somebody else was out here recently, you can see their footprints, probably. Let's keep on going. Just up here around the bend, we'll be at the base of the mountain we were just on top of, and I'll uh, show you what it looks like. And you'll see how, how far up we were. Oh, we should be in the right path. Footprints, but I was trying to leave some kind of a sign to let me let myself know I'm on the right path, and uh, clearly I am. All right, coming through that valley where you saw when we were standing on top of that mountain. Now get a load of this. This is where we just were, right up there on that mountain. That is, uh, let's see, three, four, I don't know, four or five hundred feet up, maybe. I guess I don't know. Hard to say it, but yeah, that's where we were, right up on top of those, uh, right on top of that ridge line, those cliffs. Really interesting. Would have loved to go follow it all the way around. But that's the thing about this place out here. You could you could spend days or weeks out here and still not see everything. It's it's so massive. So you've got to pick your battles. You've got to pick your terrain and have a plan on what you want to check out. So I spend as much time on Google Earth as I do hiking out here to try and find interesting places to go. See any sort of anomalies on Google Earth. I will say this, several miles that direction towards the highway, um, too long to walk clearly, there are some very strange anomalies I've seen in the hills which are clearly not natural. And um, I'd like to do some hikes out there at a later date, but it would be an all day thing. It's um, I believe 15 miles from the nearest road each way. So if I can do a recon out there, it really just depends how far I can go with the truck, four wheel drive, before I need to park and do on foot. Because uh, a lot of you driving in a wash like this, which for my truck isn't a problem at all, but you get in a wash like this and um, you know you can encounter an obstacle you can't get out of. And if you have no cell signal, it's you're kind of stuck, you're on foot. So, one reason I prefer to do some of these hikes on foot. Um, on the clock, 4.14 miles, three hours, 22 minutes, and I'm not that tired. As far as the weather, it is perfect weather for hiking. I'm not that cold. Um, winds died down. And as far as how my legs feel, perfectly fine. I mean, really, really good. I, I don't feel any worse than if I um, took a walk to, um, you know, took a walk to the kitchen to get something to eat. I'm not tired at all. And that comes with being in shape. It comes with, uh, you know, doing a jog every morning, wearing a load-bearing vest, trying to eat healthy and, and um, you know, a generally decent lifestyle. Um, that's your, that's my reward is being able to do this stuff for the videos for you guys. If you can see out there, some some cliff rocks up there. There are some caves under those rocks. They don't go in very far, 20 feet or so. But that's I would like to get up there someday. But uh, take some effort to get up there, and not significant enough to put forth some time today. Maybe another time. This is not going to be our last time in Picture Canyon. All right, so here's that kind of sub canyon from Picture Canyon. It's a little tricky to get down here. You can kind of go through that little cave tunnel thing right there. <clears throat> and you can slide down the other way. It's a little tricky to do so, but um, it can be done. So it's either that or climb up over here and it might be a little bit faster going down there. So um, it's a tough decision. Play it safe and climb the hill or take a shortcut through here and see if I can slide down. What do you think? Shortcut? How many want shortcuts? Raise your hand. How many want to go over the hill? Raise your hand. All right, shortcuts have it. The only thing I don't like about this is there's a tricky spot at the end where you've got to kind of slide and almost jump. And it can be a little dangerous, um, but it does save you from having to go climb those hills and go up and over and everything, which seems more dangerous, but it's actually a little safer, in my opinion. So we're going to climb these rocks and, uh, yeah, here it is. We've got to go down here to get inside. Thought I heard something. 
All right, anyway, let's do it. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I know I can get out this way if I had to. Look through here before. And it can definitely be tricky. But I've done it before. And I know I can do it again. So, I'm going to come through here and try not to hit my head. So I'm going a little slow and easy. Coming out through here. Just like that. And that's it, we're here. See, nothing to it. All right, so like you just saw, we're gonna come this way. We're gonna come up over there, come down to this tunnel, make it through this kind of little um, canyon and out the other side. Let's do it. Just carefully crawling through these rocks. Try not to hit my head. Maintaining four points of contact. And just crawling over these rocks. I got nothing to it. Now the other side, to get out, we've got to kind of slide down uh, six to eight foot drop off, which could be very tricky and dangerous. So that's what I'm gonna carefully do. Now I can go up and over, but that would take a long time. 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 30. So if we, if we can get out this way, we're out in less than a minute or two. And that's something I'm gonna try to do. I did it once before and I think I could do it again. So we'll be careful. All right, I did it before, I could do it again. So I'm gonna show you where we've gotta go. And it's it's a little tricky, because it's quite a bit, big drop off. We've gotta kind of throw ourselves down. It's by that cave we checked out earlier. Just up here. Nothing up there. I can't see up there. Can you? I'm guessing it's nothing. Sure, cliff faces. So this is the drop off. And yeah, I could probably just jump off here like a wild man, but I'm not going to. That's dangerous. I'm going to try to brace myself in between the two rocks and uh, gently lift my, let myself down. And uh, I'm going to put on my gloves and real film for this. I guess who knows what's going to happen. If I drop the camera, don't worry about it because um, getting a secure footing takes party. Okay, I'm trying to remember how I did this before. I think I just slide down and drop off. I'm bracing myself against right over here. And yes, I know it's dangerous, but that's what I'm trying to do. And then uh, I'm going to brace myself in between these two uh, rocks, uh, rocks right here and lower myself down enough where I could just jump. Hopefully this doesn't, hopefully this works. Easing myself down, as you can see, I am fully braced in between these two rocks. And uh, I just need to lower myself down without getting hurt. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Oh. That could have gone better, but I did, but I made it and didn't get hurt. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. There's that deep and dark cave. There's where I landed. Soft, soft dirt. And uh yeah, we uh we made it without getting hurt, thank goodness. 
always a little bit more of a risk than I should have taken, but uh, we did it regardless. We're out of here. Saved quite a bit of time, and let's keep traversing Picture Canyon and get out of here. We still got a good healthy two miles or so to go to the truck. And I'm going to roll film because this is another tricky spot. You saw it's coming up this. So what I need to do is kind of lower myself down. These, these freaking trees are always in the way. Always in the way. One of the days I'm going to saw these. Make it easier. But not today. So what I got to do is carefully lower myself in the smooth rocks I'm sitting. And then put a foothold on this rock here. And I push myself out and kind of jump. Like that. Ugh. Yeah, tricky. Tricky. I might have done this too, but that's kind of a big drop. See, this is about, uh, I'm six feet tall, right about here. This is about six feet, yeah, about seven feet. That's about seven feet right there. And I could probably jump it, but, or slide down a bit. That's the kind of risk I don't like to take when I'm here by myself. I try to be safe. Onward. There's that kind of plant or something, looks like it was something threw in the way, right in the middle of the path. Same way we came. All downhill from here shouldn't be any more extreme climbing. Just keep my eyes open, see if I see anything interesting along the way. Come through the narrow part of Picture Canyon. Maybe just because it's narrow, but I always have an uneasy feeling in here. Like there's something just right around the corner. Or something watching me. Just, I say, just an uneasy feeling about this one particular spot of Picture Canyon. If there was ever an epicenter of Picture Canyon, this is it. This, uh, not really a cave, but a kind of an outcropping. And you could see where water's been flowing clearly millions of years and maybe some really flash floods came through here, really big flash floods that carved this rock out. Um, but somehow between here and the end of Picture Canyon, through that narrow spot, and those narrow spots over there we just came through. Um, that's where I get kind of an uneasy feeling. I don't know why. But at any rate, that's that. Sun's going down, so we're not that far from the end of Picture Canyon. Uh, just around this corner is a sheep cave up on the hills. You'll see the beast again. And then it's uh, about a mile and a half you open desert to get back to the truck and then uh, drive home and we're done. So let's keep on going. So just real quick, so just real quick that sheep cave up there. And uh, I'm not going to go up. You can see how treacherous of a climb it is. And like I said earlier in the video, um, I think it was the second video I made, Desert Death Hike Part 1. I did climb this. It's a, like a 15-minute video. And uh, looking back, now that my video skills have improved, I should have put that and Part 1 and Part 2 together in the same video. But it is what it is. And uh, it's there if you want to see what it looks like to climb this. It's, it's kind of treacherous, so I'm not going to climb it. There's just no reason to have been up there already. But it's kind of a cool place. And uh, straight over there, of course, in the, in the sunset, is the beast. That uh, hill that is an absolute beast to climb. And then uh, around to the right is the exit of Pixel Canyon. All right, on the clock, five miles, almost four hours. And uh, we're making good time, almost out of Picture Canyon. And uh, right here in front of us, I don't know if it's our old friend or arch nemesis, but that is the beast. That is the beast of a hill. So if you want to see me climb the beast, check out my other videos. Beast 1, Beast 2, and even Night Beast. Yeah, we did this this bad boy at night. That was a, that was a cool a cool video. I, I really enjoyed that one. So we're going to have to come out and do that again sometime. It's difficult. It's steep. It's almost vertical in some places. But I'll tell you what. Um, I would much rather climb the beast any day over sitting in traffic. I'll tell you what. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But that's it. Let's, uh, let's keep on going towards... The end of Picture Canyon. We still got a mile and a half to go before we're at the truck, and uh, let's do it. The majestic cliffs and the beauty of Picture Canyon. I can honestly say I'm sorry to leave this place. It's quiet, it's peaceful, it's desolate, it's lonely, but 
I don't know why, I just feel at peace here. Um, despite a slightly uneasy feeling in some areas, but uh, it's just kind of nice. I feel comfortable here. It's like home. But I've got to go back to my actual home. So we're heading out of Picture Canyon right now. I still have a mile and a half to go in the desert and anything can happen out there. But this is, uh, this is the mouth of Picture Canyon. And what we need to do now is climb this small hill over here and then go a pretty much straight shot right to the truck through the open desert. So I have got uh, 5.14 miles on the clock. So we're looking at a six and a half, almost seven mile a day for probably gonna be five hours hiking. Not a big deal, believe it or not. My legs are not even a little, little bit tired. Kind of makes me wonder how far could I really go in one day now that my legs are really in shape like this. Kenny said he did what, 40 miles in a day? Maybe I need to do a video and see if that's possible. Let's keep on going. I right, just climbed that hill. It's Picture Canyon right there. Now it's time to make our long journey, mile and a half across the desert, back to the truck. Should be all pretty much downhill. So uh, I'll keep my eye out for anything interesting. I think that hill way off in the distance where I parked the truck and I can't really see it. Yeah, actually I can. I can see it a mile and a half from here, so I can see the truck. I know you can't in the video, but trust me, it's, if you know where to look. But yeah, it's there. Making progress. Uh, a little four hours on the clock, five, five and three quarters miles. <clears throat> Making it through this draw. I can see my truck way out there in the distance on uh, just the right of this small mountain range here. Almost there, just a little small draw we're coming through. See the sun kind of going down. Here in uh, Southern Nevada, the sun usually goes down around five or so this time of year. Right at the summertime, it'll stay up till about eight. So it gets dark early and it's, uh, it's 2.40 right now. So still got a few more hours of daylight left, but you can definitely tell the sun is going down in the sky. Let's go up this hill and make it back to the truck. Race to the top. Ugh. 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 No big deal. And just for the record, after I ran up that hill, yes, I was extremely winded. That wasn't in the video. At any rate, let's come down this hill and the street through the open desert back to the truck. We're almost there. All right, that's the truck. It's less than a quarter mile away. fun as I did on the clock um, 6.75 miles four and a half hours so it's it's a death hike it was a big one so I hope you enjoyed it I enjoyed having you well, if you like what you see please subscribe and if you notified when I post a new one you'll be notified if I go live uh, right down there if you're on a, a laptop or PC I uh, just hover over that little button right there that my uh, icon for my site and you'll see a subscribe button, click the subscribe. If you're on a phone or tablet, tap it, subscribe, and you'll be notified when I post a new video. I appreciate everybody subscribing. That is the reason I come out here to these mountains, uh, because you guys like seeing it. And the more uh, the more subscribers I see, that tells me the more people want to see this kind of stuff, the more I do it. So there is a lot more to see out there at Picture Canyon, the Beast, the Sheep Range. Kenny Beach is still very much missing, and we still don't have any clues as to what happened to him. 
it was an interesting day. We did go in uh, Skull Canyon and uh, you know we climbed some cliffs and it was it was adventurous. I hope you enjoyed the video. So like I said, um, thanks to subscribers, people all over the world watch these videos. Um, Woodchuck in Central Texas, Dr. Spock up near Dallas, of course Ellie be out in Australia, and lots of other ones. Um, I can't remember them all. Apologize, I just did a seven mile death hike, so I'm a little tired. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time, see you in the next adventure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. My name is Steve from Las Vegas, and these are my adventures.